I am Luce DeBay, and I love to talk about movies 24-7. I've been fascinated with films as long as I can remember, and I upload weekly. Today I'm going to be talking about the 15 comic book movies I saw in 2023, and I'm going to be ranking them as I go. Alright, let's get started. Coming in at number 15 is Batman, uh, The Dune That Came to Gotham. I really did not like this movie at all. Um... Kind of a cool idea. It's trying to mix Batman with H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, so just like Batman with these mythical creatures and tentacle monsters. It just doesn't work at all. It's really boring. Really weird. Um, I just didn't like the character. Or the character of them. It's just such an odd movie. It just didn't work for me at all. It had some interesting imagery. Um, and some like... You know, a few good lines, but overall, it's just a really bad movie, in my opinion. I really didn't like it at all. I'm sure it has its fans, but I'm definitely not one of them, unfortunately. I really dislike this one. Coming in at number 14 is Merry Little Batman. Um, This movie is basically like a Cartoon Network version of Batman, but like it's a Home Alone style. Like Damien is um, at the mansion, he's got to defend it from robbers. Um... It's a movie that would be better if it was like 22 minutes. Like a little short film. Be a great short film. As a 90 minute movie, it just kind of... It just kind of uh, lost me. It just... it it Its premise is just not long enough for a 90 minute movie. Has some pretty funny moments. Um, I just don't like the am, an, uh, animation style on this one. Um, it, ha, it has some uh, in, entertainment aspects but overall i just didn't really enjoy it um it's fun enough for it's like good enough for a one-time watch um it just like I, there's nothing really here it's just like kind of a little bit dull and lifeless it's fun enough for one-time watch on the on amazon but it's just not interesting and not engaging and it's, um if you're one like a batman christmas movie i mean it could be worse for sure but Wish this one was a lot better, um, in my opinion. Next up is Knights of the Zodiac. Um, this is actually based off a of manga, um, Saint Seiya, and I'm not familiar with that, um, that at all. I'd like to get into it though. Um, but this movie came back, uh, out in like May, I believe. Um, this was an interesting experience for sure. I didn't think it was terrible, um, but I didn't think it was great. It was kind of fun. Um, has some very interesting vil uh, visuals, and I like the characters. Um, it's just an odd movie. It just feels almost like a fever dream at times. has a little bit of bad CGI, um, and it has some odd acting, and um, this doesn't fully mesh together quite well. Um, great. I uh, really like the two lead performances. Um, it just feels like an odd american remake of you know of a manga which is basically it is i haven't seen dragon ball evolution but i heard that's quite terrible i don't think it's quite like that level of bad even though i haven't seen it but i it's just it's just fine it's like a c my c movie it, it's, it's perfectly fine for what it is definitely didn't hate it i enjoyed watching it it's just it's just a very odd movie like i said it feels like a fever dream it's very different very bizarre it just doesn't they didn't make it fully work um i don't think everything that happens it really translates to live action quite well it has some good action sequences a lot of cool moments it just doesn't fully work unfortunately next up is a uh, legion of superheroes i love um uh, anything superman related i'm a big fan of uh superman he's my favorite dc character and i love supergirl so i was excited to that we're getting like a movie of hers lead in the uh, legion of superheroes which i'm also a fan of that being said this movie is kind of just okay it's just not, not much really to it. Story's kind of interesting. I won't get into spoilers in case you want to see it, but it's basically Supergirl's having trouble controlling her powers and having trouble not destroying everything. So uh, Superman basically sends her to the, the, the Legion of Superheroes to like get a handle on her powers, which is an interesting idea. Um, but they, they set up this mystery and this like story that just wasn't particularly interesting. It's just a very dull, okay movie. It's, it's, I guess it's fun enough. Um, you know, I like the characters, um, run, doesn't overdo it with the runtime, but I just don't, even, I, don't re, I barely remember it, honestly. I just remember parts of it, and that's not a great sign if it's forgettable. It was just an okay, fine superhero movie. 
Next up is the Marvels. Um, I actually like this one less and less the more I think about it. Um, it's just a mess and a disappointment. It's just like trying to get all these things together. WandaVision, Secret Invasion, Captain Marvel, um, Miss Marvel combined into one movie, like a power swap movie. And it's just awkward. It doesn't work. The story is really bad. A lot of plot holes. Um, a lot of cringy moments involving the Flurkins and like this singing planet it's just really bad it's just like it's just such an awkward weird movie i don't think it's terrible but it's just it's just so disappointing and this is this is not what the mcu is supposed to be um it's supposed to be better than this i um it's 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 a bad movie it's not complete garbage but it's bad it, it's honestly bad it's not good um it's really disappointing um it's fun seeing these characters together um but it just there's just, there's just such bad CGI. They, there's some, they set up some intriguing post-credits, but the CGI was so bad in one scene. It looked like a cartoon character in a live-action movie. So how are you supposed to get excited if they don't, if, like, the effort's not put in? And I don't blame the VFX artist, because they're, they're, like, busting their ass trying to do this. It's just Marvel is just pushing them so hard, pushing out all these projects in a year. So, of course, it's not their fault. It's just um, quantity over quality. And it's just not working anymore. And it's so disappointing. Like, I used to be so excited for all the MCU movies. It's like my favorite franchise. I honestly don't care anymore. They disappointed me way, way, way too many times. So, I'm excited for Deadpool 3 because that's kind of separate. But, and the Avengers movies, of course. But besides that, I'm just not really excited for anything upcoming. They really have to win me back and a lot of other people back. Because it's just not working anymore. This is a dull, lifeless, hollow movie. It's uh, really sad. I mean, it, it's fun enough, I guess. It's like it's like entertaining, but it's just so dull and lifeless. Next up, um, another um, MCU movie, um, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. <laughs> another massive disappointment. Um, I was really excited to see Kang, Jonathan Majors as Kang. He did a great job, and he's not even going to be Kang anymore because of real life stuff that happens, which I won't get into. But um, yeah, there's a lot to that. Um, that would have to be its own video, but it's disappointing. It just, so much of this movie didn't work. Story is not good. They were cast Cassie Lang, C Catherine Newton was, uh, was good. Um, but this story is just so dull, again, dull and lifeless. It just doesn't work. Um, there's so many unfunny, cringy parts, like Modoc. I literally forget he's in the movie a lot of the times until people bring it up. Or I, um, it just... It's just like the CGI is so bad, it's not funny. Um, the writing is really bad and cringy. The, um, plot holes. Um, there's, I just don't like a lot of the what they do with the side characters. Um, like, and the humor's off, the motion didn't land. They, what they do with King at the end it just feels underwhelming and disappointment. And it has, I think, probably, if not. One of the worst, the uh, maybe the worst endings of an MCU movie. I literally just like scoffed at the ending. I was like, "That's it. That's how you're gonna end this movie." It's like so disappointing. Uh, I don't know what they're doing over at, <laughs> over at Disney. MCU used to be on the top. Now they're just make, putting out pretty bad movies. Again, they're like watchable. They're like digestible entertainment, but it's just not good. It's it. They're bad. They're just bad movies. They just don't work anymore. Like, go back to just, like, making good movies. After Endgame, it just went downhill. Of course, they had some wins, of course. Like, No Way Home and Shang-Chi and some other ones. But, like, a lot of them were just bad and disappointing. I just, like, don't care anymore. So, yeah. Um, next up um, is going to be a DC movie. Um, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Another disappointment <laughs> that there's an ongoing theme. Uh, I'll get to the positives. I'm, I'm not negative on all these, obviously, but um, yeah, I love the first Shazam. I think it's really good. I saw it twice in theaters. I loved it. I love the family dynamic, love the characters. One of the be uh, best DCEU movies, in my opinion. Watched it several times. Great Christmas movie, great family movie. But this one, there's just nothing to it. Has some great visual effects for sure. Looks great. Um, you know, it's nice seeing these characters again. But it's basically like this super you could just call it superhero of the movie. It's the most bland, generic superhero movie 
Like, it's, it's just like, there's nothing special, nothing new. We've seen all this before. Uh, and there's just so many humorous moments that don't land. There's like a part that's so disrespectful. They kind of like put this character's head on like Wonder Woman's body in a dream sequence. And it was like incredibly awkward to watch. I was like, I was like, please end this, like this scene right now. Because it's like really weird and awkward. Um, it's just like, you know, it has a fun soundtrack. It's like, it's like entertaining. It has some emotional aspects at the end. But it, it was ruined in the trailer. So it can't fully sell you on those emotional aspects. But would have worked a lot better if it wasn't spoiled. Um, but yeah, I mean, the emotional aspects uh, would have worked without that. But besides that, it's just a bland superhero movie. There's nothing to it. It's just so bland, generic. It's just uh, it's not even rewatchable. It's just like, it's like you've seen, you've seen this movie a hundred times before. It's just not interesting. Um, next up, uh, a lot of people probably don't know about this one. It came out in September. Scooby-Doo, let me get the title right, and Crypto 2. Um, it's a, the second Scooby-Doo crossover. There's a Batman one that came out in 2018. But this is like Scooby-Doo crossing over with Crypto and like Lex Luthor. And it's okay. I like the Batman one a lot better. Um, it just like, I don't really like the story they went with this one. They're just like, you know, stuck in like the Justice League Museum. And like, there's these phantoms. It just like kind of felt like hollow. Even for a Scooby-Doo man, I love Scooby-Doo. And, like, I know, like, it's a direct-to-DVD or whatever, but most of them I, you know, I tend to enjoy. But this one is kind of, like, a little boring. It's not interesting. So, you know, it's always cool seeing Scooby-Doo and the gang, like, team up with, like, you know, DC characters. Crypto was pretty cool in it. And, you know, Lex Luthor had some funny moments. But, again, this is another forgettable movie. Um, you know, fun enough. It's okay. But it's, uh, it could have been better. Um, next up, this is my last negative one, and then we're going to get to the positives. Uh, Extraction 2. Uh, I know some people are probably on the positive side. I never really enjoyed the first one. I probably give it, like, a B plus. I really enjoyed it. I liked the story. This one, I didn't care about. I really didn't. I just saw, had, like, some great action sequences. That one take, like, prison escape part was amazing, looked amazing. When I saw the trailer, I thought I was going to love this movie. That's the only good part of the movie, though, to be honest. This is just bland action movie. All right, Th that's what it is. It could have you could just call this bland action movie too. Has some great action sequences, very well directed. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is amazing as um, Tyler Rake. Tyler Rake's pretty badass, but besides that, it's just so dull in life. It's just this bland action movie, just going for like two hours, and it's just not interesting, not engaging, and just didn't care about anything. Like the most dull, like forgettable villain ever. It's just like I don't remember his name or his or anything about him, and I. Just watch it for the first time not that long ago. Just such a dull, boring, generic villain that you just don't care about whatsoever. I really I thought this movie was really disappointing. It wasn't terrible or anything. It was just a dull action movie uh, with some great action thrown in there. So, yep, didn't like it. Um, Next up, uh, so we're finally getting to the positives. So <laughs> apparently there's a lot of negative... Uh, I have a lot of negative opinions on comic movies this year, but we're getting to the positives now. All right. So next up is Aquaman uh, and the Lost Kingdom. Saw so this with a double uh, double feature of my best friend, uh, Lewis. Uh, we saw this movie and Godzilla Minus One. Godzilla Minus One being the better movie, of course. Um, but this one, you know, it was just dumb fun. It was entertaining enough. Had some really dumb moments, to be fair. There's actually one moment I was like, what the F? And I started laughing out loud. And the, and the movie didn't, and that was not intentional. So really cringy um, moments in this movie. But, you know, it's fun enough. It's, it's like, I know I keep on saying this, but it's fun enough. <laughs> but that's like how a lot of comic book movies are nowadays, like the generic ones. It's just fun enough. Um, but I go in more on the positive side because I actually did, you know, feel entertained. And I did get some chuckles. And I just felt like, you know, just like engaged and just had fun watching it at least. Um... You know, I love seeing Aquaman team up with Orm. That's like, that sold the movie for me. I love their dynamic and love their bantering and love like them like slowly getting wrong and like them becoming brothers and all that. Uh, I thought Black Mana was a badass villain. He looked really cool with a black trident and the green eyes and like his motivation story that like, he could have been utilized more, but like, um, can't think of his name off the top of my head. I'd probably butcher it anyways. 
Um, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna try it, but he's an amazing actor. Um, he definitely, uh, nailed the role of Black Manta both times around. Um, great lead villain. Love the suit, love everything about the Black Manta character. Um, really liked, um, Patrick Wilson as Orm. Didn't love Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and that's coming from someone that really liked him in the, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League and, um, his movie. He just felt like he was phoning and in this one. He felt more like Jason Momoa than Aquaman. And, it, and a lot of his lines were not making him laugh. Didn't, didn't like it. Um, didn't like his delivery or, his, or what he was saying. It just felt like Jason Momoa, not Aquaman, like the previous two entries. So, wasn't a fan of that. Um, as for other characters, you know, Mirror's in it a little bit. Of course, there's a lot of controversy of Amber Heard. She's in it more than I thought she'd be, and she was fine. Um, but yeah, I thought the writing was a little sloppy, just, you know, kind of a generic bland story, but fun enough. It was like a B minus. It was fun. It had some good humorous moments. It was what it, it was a, it was a decent enough follow up to Aquaman. So yeah, good enough. Next up, I didn't even know this was a comic book movie, but The Killer, new David Fincher movie, probably my second favorite director of all time behind uh, Christopher Nolan. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. I didn't know it was a comic book movie until someone, I think Sean Chandler mentioned it in one of his videos. I was like, oh, well, I better watch, uh, I was going to watch it anyways, but I held off on a little bit because I was hearing some negative, like, some negative reactions, not, or not negative, just like not as, like, highly praised as I was, as I wanted it to be, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I like this movie. It's really well done. Michael Fassbender is amazing. Um, but there's just not much to the story. It's just about an assassin doing assassin things. I was trying to keep my expectations in check because I knew that's what it was going to be. But there's nothing really too special in my opinion. It's good. It's really well done. The directing's phenomenal. Acting is top notch. Um, soundtrack's really good. Writing is good. Has a decent flow. Um, definitely in some tense scenes. One of the best action sequences of the year. But there's just nothing to the story. It's just like assassin doing assassin stuff or or hitman doing hitman so whatever he is because i don't <laughs> didn't really care to be honest um but it was um it was good it was a solid uh action movie um i thought this was better than extraction 2 because it's just a style and it, and it just sets you up for it better than extraction 2 what you're gonna get so like i could buy this it into this one a little bit more than an Interaction 2. And I thought, obviously, I think it's a lot much better movie. It's a good movie. I was like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm positive on this one. I'm going to be B plus, um, probably B. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. It's really well done. Don't love it. There's just not much to it. It's just a, a solid action movie. Next up, I'm just going to be a hot take, even though I am positive on it. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, good movie. I was disappointed by it though. Um, I thought I love I love all the stuff involving Rocket and his story. Um, I loved um, that the character development had a lot of really funny moments. There's one moment involving Star Lord Nebula in the car that made me laugh out loud. I just didn't love the story, and there's no stakes, and that really disappointed me once again. Like every single D, uh, not DC, every single MCU movie that came out this year disappointed me. This is by far the best. I'm, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is way better than the Marvels and uh, Ant Man 3. I'm not saying they're in the same category. This is good. Like, I did like B minus B. But it's just like, it just still disappointed me. I, like, I, I love the acting, love the directing from James Bond. Look, it's a really good looking movie. L Runtime flow is good. Just thought the, the story is bland. It just wasn't that interesting. Like I said, I love the rocket stuff. Um, but the overall just the villain and story was just not compelling to me. Um, but you know, solid. It's, it's a good movie. I just wish it would have been a little better. I wasn't, uh, wasn't up there with everyone else thinking this is an amazing movie, but it's solid. All right. Next up is Blue Beetle. I think this one's underrated. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Another movie I saw with some of my best friends, uh, Lewis. We had a great time seeing this one. Um, I just love the character of um, Jaime Reyes. Uh, Jolo did a great um, job as character. Sorry for mispronounce his name. Um, but yeah, I just really liked his character and the family dynamic. His family's just with him from the beginning. Um, it's really like how that played out, how he's so connected to his family. It's very much a family movie. Um, like the directing, 
a beautiful looking movie. A lot of beautiful colors. I like the atmosphere. Um, like how it sets things up at the beginning. How it ends things. Very emotional. Has a great flow and runtime. A lot of tension filled scenes. Some scenes are a little silly, but a lot of the humor lands for me. Uh, I thought the suit and the visual effects looked fantastic. Overall, this movie really worked for me. I just really liked it. Just really fun, entertaining, engaging uh, superhero movie. Uh, next up is the the Flash. Um, I mentioned him um, a couple times, but it's a hot take. I know the CGI is really bad. And he goes to the you know baby stuff with the siege four stuff and has some cringy moments and the endings are rushed. But besides that, I think it's an absolutely phenomenal movie. I absolutely loved it. One of the funniest movies I ever seen in the theater. Um, uh, another one I saw my best friend uh, Lewis. Um, he said I was l the laughing the hardest in the theater, which I never have once done in my life. Usually when I think of something's funny, I just chuckle, or I just think in my head that's funny. But I was, like, dying laughing. It was, like, very much my humor. So that's very rare. So this is, like, one of the funniest movies I ever watched. And besides that, I think it has some great emotional moments with Barry and his parents. I love the Batman 1989 stuff. Michael Keaton is back better than ever. Sasha Kai is an awesome, badass Supergirl. Love that, that, that team up. And, you know, even though it has some bad CGI, I thought that um, some of it was really good with the, you know, final battle of Zod. And when they go to um, Russia, I thought that was all really good. I thought the writing was really good and the ending was very funny. I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, I thought the acting was top notch. Michael Keaton's amazing. Sasha Kyle's amazing. Ezra Miller is a piece of garbage in real life. I'll just throw out there. But if I'm um, putting that aside, um, their performance was really good. I hate, like I said, don't like him, but their performance was good. So uh, performances were great. Love um, the ending, love the beginning, love all the humor. Uh, great soundtrack, just such a fun movie and so in entertaining and engaging. I, I loved it. I'm one of the few defenders of this movie. I understand why people don't like it, but I absolutely love it. And uh, coming in at number one, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Such a perfect comic book movie and Spider-Man movie. Second favorite Spider-Man movie ever. Um, I love the animation style. Um, how you, unique it gets. There's like there's a scene between Gwen and her dad with it like just like almost looks like a painting in the background dripping. Um, this such great character development all around of Miles and Gwen. I love them together and them teaming up and where the story went with them. I love the family aspects with Miles and this and his parents. They they spend a lot of time with that because it's a pretty long movie. But I loved it. Loved them setting everything up and how everything goes. I loved all this. Spider-Man cameos and has some really fun and cool ones. Soundtrack was amaz uh, amazing. By I think it's Metro Boomin. Phenomenal soundtrack, especially the end, the the first one at the end credits, like after that crazy cliffhanger. Ooh, perfect song, amazing. I listen to that all the time. Flow runtime perfect. Um, story is phenomenal. Love what they did with the multiverse and the the villain. How they make him kind of silly at first, and then he becomes more and more menacing. I thought that was really cool. A lot of great emotional aspects for sure. Um, the ending has an amazing cliffhanger that um, was one of the best comic book movie endings I've ever seen. And I haven't got a feeling like that after seeing a comic movie since Infinity War and Endgame. And those are top two like comic book movies all the time for me. So that's definitely high praise. And that's and this, the audience reaction. I haven't seen anything like that since uh, Infinity War. The, like like the cliffhanger in this one. They're like, they're like what the F? They're like, that's it? And I was just like laughing. I was like, man, what a great movie. Um, like, you know, some cliffhangers like that kind of piss me off. But I love this one. It's such a good cliffhanger, even though it just leaves you hanging big time. But this is such great writing, voice acting from everybody. Such a tension-filled, intense movie. Just love how it starts, how it ends. I just love absolutely everything about it. It's just an absolutely perfect movie. Um, just A+, plus, one of the best cop movies of all time. All right, well, that's my list. Um, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is number one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Got more videos coming soon. You guys have a great day and take care. Bye.